before we go any further. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we come saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Lord, for being who you are. Yes, dear. Thank you, Lord, for being my father. Yes, thank you, Lord, for creating this vast universe. Thank you, Lord, for being the giver of life. Yeah. The uh -huh. author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Lord God, I come saying thanking you today. Jesus. Lord, I thank you. If it had not been for you, yeah. where would I be? Yeah. Lord God, I would be like a ship on a, on a wretched ocean, mm -hmm. just torn apart, just going to and fro. Yeah. But Lord, I thank you that you've kept me and you, you allowed me. my golden yeah. moments to yeah. roll on. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for the word that you planted in my heart. Thank you, thank you Heavenly thank you Father, for those that thank are here Lord. today. Yeah. Lord God, I thank you because they are here. They are willing to hear your word. Yeah. Now, Father God, I'm asking that you please just help plant the words into their hearts. Yeah. Help us to live by your word, yeah. through your word, Father God. Now, Father, please bring back to my remembrance those yes. things in your words that I've studied. Yes, Lord. Help, Heavenly Father, that your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. So I won't sin against you. Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 For those of you that have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 7 through 12. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. When you get it, you can say amen. 2 Corinthians, right after Romans. Romans is 1 Corinthians, then it goes to 2 Corinthians. <coughs> Fourth chapter, verses 7 through 12. Amen? Amen. And the scripture reads, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted on every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. Death works in us, but life in you. And if I had to paraphrase that scripture, put it in, um, my version, I would simply say for verse 7, but we have this good and precious thing collected and laid up in these frail bodies of ours mm -hmm. so that the greatness and superiority of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. So what we have to give to you is from God and not from ourselves. So the title of my, my message today is There is a treasure inside of you. Right. Is there a treasure inside Amen. of you? Yes. And when I think about that, I think about all the things that Paul went through. And before I go on, I want to tell you that 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 was written by Paul. Paul is the author here, and he's writing to the church at Corinth because he found out that after God had inspired him to construct the church there in Corinth, False teachers were coming behind him, teaching them false doctrines. Yeah. So Paul felt the need to defend himself and defend his stance in the Lord. So he is writing this letter. He's writing this letter because the false teachers, what, what Paul did, he sent them a, another uh, statement stating, I'm going to come and visit you, but instead of visiting you twice, I'm going to make one long visit too. So he changed his itinerary, and it's okay to change your itinerary, but when you have adversaries fighting you on every hand, they're going to take something small and make something big out of it. So they took that small statement where Paul was changing his itinerary, and they told the Corinthian people that Paul was not 
for real. Paul was not the apostle that he said he was, that he was false, that he was not true. He was a counterfeit. So here we have Paul actually defending himself. They even told the Corinthian people that, hey, Paul can't be trusted. Has that ever happened to you? You tell people one thing and somebody else come behind and say something differently? So here we have these false teachers coming behind saying something different. They are making a mountain out of a molehill. So Paul is here defending himself. They told the people, these false teachers told the people that, okay, the money that you're collecting for your four brothers and sisters in Jerusalem, Paul is going to take that money, he's going to put it in his pocket, and you'll never see him or the money again. That's my verse. But th that's basically what he said, what the people, what the false teachers were saying. So as I said before, Paul here is defending his, himself. And that brings me to my first point. And my first point is, God can use even me in a broken state. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine how Paul felt when he got the word that this church that he created in Corinth is now in turmoil because the false teachers there are teaching them something different. Paul here feels broken. He feels like all my work was in vain. If it were me, if it were some of us out there, we'll say, well, let them do whatever they want to do. But Paul is concerned with their souls. He's concerned with their spirits. So he's led to write the letter. And then you know that he is broken because of what has happened. And it gives me joy to know that even if we are broken, the glory of God can still shine through our brokenness. So the broken state that people are trying to destroy your character. They might be trying to destroy your laughter. They might be trying to destroy your joy. They might be trying to destroy your um, attitude that you have on life. They might be trying to destroy everything godly that you stand for. But I tell you, you have to be broken in order for your life to shine. So you have to be broken here to kerosene. People are going to talk about you. They're going to talk about you if they like you. They're going to talk about you if they dislike you. Let them talk, but you continue to tell a dying world about Jesus and what he's done for you. You can tell them how he set you free, how he made you free from your sin, how he touched your body, how he saved your soul, because there is a testimony inside each and every one of us. And it's up to us to tell the story that what God has done for us. You can be broken to your personal feelings. When it comes to talking and speaking about the word of God, your personal feelings have nothing to do with the word. You need to put your personal feelings aside. And I can imagine Paul here was feeling some personal things. He's human. He's going to feel some things. But he put all those things aside and he focused on what God had him to do. He focused on getting the word back to the people. He focused on salvation. He focused on spending eternity with Jesus in heaven. This is what Paul focused on. So he put aside his brokenness to his emotion and his pride. Don't worry. Cry or get upset when things don't go your way. Look at Paul. He had every reason to give up, but he didn't. Paul explains some of his hardship in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And some of the things Paul went through, he said, I am a hard worker. I have been in prison more times than I care to recount. I have been severely flogged. I have been beaten with the rod. I have been beaten with the 40 lashes that the Jews gave me. 40 lashes minus one. And how they were beaten with the 40 lashes minus one, that means... They had, the Jews had this custom, they had leather straps that they beat the people with, with. And on the end of the leather straps were metal and glass. And Paul said, I have been beaten with the leather straps 40 times minus one, so 39 times. He said, I have been shipwrecked three times. I have been bitten by snakes. I have been in danger of the river. I have been in danger of false teachers. I have been in danger by wilderness experience. I have been
even in danger, but yet I toil. I toil for you because I want you to know that there is a God and he cares for you. In verse 28, with all the other things going on, Paul says, but I still am concerned about the church and what's going on with the church. So you see, Paul had a lot of stuff. He's been going through a whole lot, but through everything that he'd gone through, he was still worried and concerned about the church. Yeah. Paul had to put whatever he, he was feeling aside and focus on what God was telling him. Yeah. So that tells me you have to be broken to your pride and to your emotions. Right. A lot of times that's a hard thing to do. You don't want to put your emotions aside, but Paul is saying, put it aside and concentrate on the things that God would have you to do. Okay? Now, you have to also be broken to grieve. God doesn't care about your profit. He doesn't care about your loss. He doesn't care about your income statement. He doesn't care about who you are or what you are. He doesn't care if you're up. He doesn't care if you're down. I'm not going to say care per se, but what he wants is our obedience in order to carry the word. He wants us to take the word for him. He is concerned about all those things, but the most important thing is carry his word. Amen. And that's what Amen. we're here to do. We're going to carry the word of God. Amen. You have obstacles blocking you on every side. You might say, I can't make it. But God can. You will be tried. But you can say, God can. God can help me make it. You see, God has bestowed treasures inside of us. Each and every one of us in this room has a treasure inside. Amen. If you know the word of God, you have a treasure inside of you. Our job is to tell dying men and women about Jesus. Amen. How hard is that? What has Jesus done for you? Yes. You heard that old song, what has he done for me lately? God has done everything for me. Yes. Everything for me. And what he wants us to do is to tell others. And when I think about that, I think about it's not about me. It's not about you. But it's all about God. Amen. That's the main thing he wants us to tell. It's all about God. This brings me to my second point, and that is, there is a treasure inside of me. Uh -huh. There is a treasure inside of me. And all of you can say, there is a treasure inside of me. Look at verse 7. Paul says, but we have a treasure in earthen vessels. These are human bodies of ours, frail. And he says, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Back in the day, it was customary for people to have their treasures in clay jars and clay pots. These clay vessels had very little value and they weren't pretty to look at. They were not pretty at all. But the people of the time would hide their treasures in these old vessels. They would put jewelry, they would put their documents, important documents, in these, in these old clay pots. He didn't, like Paul, he did not want the attention on himself. He wanted the attention on God's word. Okay? He carried in his heart God's word. He carried in his mouth God's word. And he carried in his mind God's word. These clay vessels also represent Paul's human frailty. You see, we're all weak vessels. But Paul said, this represents who I am. I am frail. Mm. I am expendable. I am breakable. You can get rid of me anytime you want to. But as long as I carry the word of God in my heart, Amen. as long as I can tell you about Jesus, then I know that God will save me through everything. Yes. So let me point out that this clay vessel was frail. It was a tool that was used in the household of the people back in the day. It served as you guys know what a night pot is, right? Mm -hmm. If we're old enough, we all didn't have bathrooms coming up, so we had a night pot. Paul says, this old clay vessel was like a night pot. And he says, I am the one who's carrying the waste. Mm. He's carrying the waste. And when he said that, it made me think, boy, he is expendable. He is weak. He is breakable. Because you can't do that but for so long. But Paul just kept on doing it over and over and over again. These vessels held garbage. It held garbage. Ugly, broken clay vessels. It could hold anything from garbage. It could hold anything from garbage to 